welcome to our ICT for D conference podcast. My name is Sonia Ritzel from CRS and I'm interviewing experts for you to talk about digital technologies and the food crisis. Today, I welcome my colleagues at Catholic Relief Services to share insights how they have set up and are using a market monitoring data dashboard for food security. Joining me from the Philippines is Janine Cayetano, a data and geospatical analyst within the global ICT4D team. Her role in this effort is to streamline data processing and build out visualization and analysis. And calling in from the US is Sonia Perakis, a senior advisor for market monitoring and analysis at the global supply chain management team. She's an agricultural economist by training and advises on response planning related to the global food crisis at CRS. Welcome both. Sonia, would you like to take the lead and tell us more about the dashboard and its context? The global market monitoring dashboard is a centralized set of market information and databases, along with supporting visualizations to support CRS country programs with their program design, budgeting, and adaptation efforts. Having access to this information has become increasingly important in the past few years in the context of very high and volatile prices on the one hand, but then also increased donor flexibility in terms of assistance modalities on the other. So historically, the majority of the assistance that CRS provided was in the form of American U.S. goods in kind. And over the past few years, there has been increasing cash made available to support what's referred to as local and regional procurement. So that's purchasing goods locally, both food and non-food items but then also making cash available directly to beneficiaries so they can make their own um, purchasing decisions. So in the context of that increased flexibility, we need more data and more information to make decisions about the most appropriate modality in a given context. The other thing about the dashboard that I wanted to say is that, you know, a lot of the data that we'll be talking about today is publicly available, but it's not in one place. You, know, you have to go to many different databases, many different websites. So what we really wanted to do was cut out the time spent by country programs for looking for and then also aggregating or processing regular data. Our hope is that by automating a lot of these steps and centralizing the data, the dashboard will serve as a really useful and reliable resource for CRS staff moving forward. Thank you so much, Sonia, for the introduction. Could you please explain why are we collecting this data? What is the objective here? We're currently in an unprecedented time with the four C's of COVID, climate, conflict, and cost. Assistance needs globally, including for both food and non-food items, remain at an all-time high. So in this context, CRS provides life-saving assistance to address acute food insecurity through emergency programming, which is a core aspect of the agency's work globally. CRS also engages in work to support communities with the underlying drivers of food insecurity through resilience programming. The past few years have really demonstrated that these facets of food insecurity remain a top priority for the agency's work. In the context of all of these different contributing factors, you know, and scarce resources, and then the increased assistance flexibility on the donor side that I mentioned earlier, data dashboards like the one that we're working on can really help to identify and prioritize ways that we can sustainably improve our programs. So this market monitoring dashboard curates a wide range of market data and information that Janine will talk about uh, to support specific decision making related to program design. So that's kind of at the beginning phase of an activity and then also adaptation. So, for example, when there's some kind of shock and prices double program necessarily will have to adapt in some way to that. And so we're hoping that having access to these data can help support some of that adaptation efforts. These market monitoring insights are especially helpful as CRS continues to expand beyond the distribution of U.S. commodities overseas to market-based programming like the local and regional procurement and the cash and voucher programming. Thank you, Sonia. 
So my first question for you, Janine, is what kind of data are you collecting? So for this global market monitoring dashboard, we are actually leveraging multiple data sources coming from the country program data sets and mostly secondary sources. So coming from the World Bank, IMF or International Monetary Fund, WFP. There's also FUSENET, FAO, USDA, USAID, Trading Economics, REACH and other key partners. So our hope is to integrate and take away the need for country programs and our partners in collecting their own data, especially when it relates to context monitoring, wherein lots of resources are already existing as a starting point. So instead of collecting base data locally, we can actually use what's already existing. However, it is still important for our program managers to have a good understanding of the data as well as the visualizations that they need to make and the information they need to make those decisions. That will then allow us to streamline the dashboard according to their need to be succinct and action oriented. In addition, we are actually connecting our data through web links and API because previously we've been doing this manually. This helps us to trigger what we call scheduled data refresh that helps us avoid manually inputting data, which makes it easier for country programs as well as decision makers like program managers to keep the data up to date. Thank you, Janine. It is very evident that this market monitoring dashboard requires a lot of collaboration. Could you please explain us a little bit more how you're going about curating and coordinating the data between the SMEs and the ICT for the experts? Like I've said earlier on how we are collecting data, it comes from a lot of secondary sources as well as country program data. This specific dashboard is leveraging many different data sets and data streams, both internal and external to CRS. So the subject matter experts are the ones who really know what's in the data sets because they've been working on this regularly. So this has required really a close collaboration between Sonia Karakis and me, which is her being the subject matter expert and me as the ICT 4D staff. So she is quite familiar with the data and decision-making insights, what's in it, how we can leverage it, or how can we able to better visualize the data. While folks on the ICT4D side like me use advanced analytics to create streamline or automate data processing and analytics and help create compelling visualizations to support decision-making. One thing about this is it also helps me understand what the underlying data is so I can create better visualizations for the country programs to use or Sonia's team to use. And this effort also highlights many opportunities to harmonize metadata and data fields in terms of CRS level data management, especially in contexts where CRS is gathering primary data that are used for market monitoring. Thank you, Janine. We now learned what the objective is and why you're doing this from scratch, as well as your processes. So my next question is for Sonia. Like, how is this data actually really used by the communities? As I mentioned, the dashboard provides insights from both CRS and secondary data to support a range of activities from initial budget development at the proposal stage to adjusting transfer values in the context of cash and voucher programs or procurement plans uh, for local and regional procurement activities. An example is that most recently, the databases have been used in many different ways by country programs to support both kind of operational and programmatic implications of high inflation and depreciation. So, for example, in a handful of countries, as you're likely aware, there's very, very high inflation that is happening at the same time as the local currency might be depreciating in value. 
And so what we're seeing in some cases is that staff are raising concerns that their wages are not keeping pace with increased cost of living, even when they're converted you know, from U.S. dollars to a local currency value. And so one of the ways in which the databases have been used is to provide an evidence base to inform some of those decisions. So we can say, OK, yes, in this context, context, the cost of living is rising faster than the local currency is depreciating. And so maybe it may, might make sense to consider looking back at the wages that are being paid. On the other hand, we can also say, well, in this context, the cost of living isn't increasing at the same rate. And so maybe we need to look at other things that are going on. So it's really to provide an evidence base when there are some of these types of concerns that are being raised. Um, another example that I can provide as to how some of these data are being used in the context of increasing prices, especially when a country program is doing cash transfer programming. The transfer values that are being set are usually linked to the cost of some kind of commodity and service basket. So maybe it's a food basket, maybe it's food with milling costs, so it would be food and services. And so if there is an increase in the price on markets, a household might not be able to afford that basket of goods or those services with the transfer value that was originally set by the program. And so using some of the insights from these market monitoring data, again, country programs have an evidence base to help go and make any adjustment to those transfer values so they're more in sync with the actual market trends so that households are able to purchase the amount of goods and services that was originally intended in the program design. These are just a couple of examples of the ways in which the data can directly link in to some of CRS's programming. Thank you, Sonia, for these uh, very clear examples. My next question is for Janine. If you could please tell us more about the underlining data that's being used. Sure. So this market monitoring dashboard tracks qualitative indicators of commodity availability along with quantitative data like monthly import and export volumes. Also prices for key commodities as well as livestock and wages along with macroeconomic indicators like inflation and exchange rate data. So the dashboard, both official and secondary exchange rate data for countries, where there is a disconnect between, you know, the official exchange rate set by the government as well as the market rate. Together, we use this data for early action and planning and specific response modalities like local and regional procurement and also cash transfer programs. And ensuring in-kind assistance is not negatively affecting markets. So in the context of high inflation and depreciation, it is possible that the original cash transfer values set during the proposal or budgeting stage are no longer adequate for household to purchase the intended quantity of goods. So it's really important for country programs as well as decision makers to understand and adjust their programming either at the budget stage, if possible, as necessary, whether it means increasing the budget and transfer values or maintaining the budget and scaling back the number of beneficiaries or the transfer values. So like I've said earlier, most of the data are accessed via publicly available API links. But we also have purchased a couple of subscription. Mostly, I think, revolves around exchange rate to access this data sets. But what I mentioned, there's also a few data sources that are not automated. So that's a bit of finding a solution to hopefully make this automated. So as of now, we download those data and process them locally. but Still, we try to upload them into web links. So whenever a new data comes in or someone inputs a new data set within those web links, it is still automated. So the data is still being refreshed on our dashboards and that helps us to keep it up to date. Thank you, Janine. And my final question is for Sonia. What are some of the specific country level insights you have been able to generate? 
Thank you. The dashboard analyses have been used in various country level discussions, so let me provide a few illustrative examples. We have curated and visualized data for use in country level programs uh, decision making for a handful of examples. And let me start with Afghanistan. In 2022, we came across a situation where there was a very large gap between the transfer value that was set by the National Food Security Cluster for cash transfer programming and the actual cost of the standard food basket on local markets. So the analysis, like those provided in the dashboard, was used in that context First, to adjust the transfer values that were being practiced locally by CRS staff, but possibly more important, the analysis was used for advocacy among the partners. So we were worth operating in a context where, you know, lots of people are collecting data, but it wasn't necessarily being analyzed in a way that allowed the kind of time series perspective and also kind of taking a step back and asking, OK, is what we're doing, are we really providing the intended volumes of food to our beneficiaries? And so the insights from the dashboard have really been helpful in some of those advocacy discussions because it is much more interesting to engage in a conversation when you have an evidence base, right, to refer to rather than just going in and doing advocacy without that kind of um, information and insights. So a second example that I can speak to was in Somalia, where they are experiencing multiple seasons of drought. And there were questions about, you know, whether there was a relationship between commodity shortages on markets and the prices on practice on markets. And so a question was, you know, well, where are shortages most pervasive right now? And then where are prices most elevated nationally? Similarly, in the Somalian context, Although they do have rain-fed production, there's also quite a bit of, of imports from international markets. And so given those interlinkages between international markets and local markets, the insights from the dashboard, which compared local market prices to international market prices, allowed us to see how those trends related in the current year. And so we could see that in past years, when global prices went up, prices in Somalia either went up or went down, depending on what the context was. And so the insights from the dashboard were able to allow for some early warning on the potential effects of elevated and volatile global prices as they related to the crisis in Ukraine. The third example that I'll give is from the DRC where some of the dashboard insights have been used as background information for activity planning and budgeting. So we're not yet into the program adaptation phase, we're still in the design phase. And here we were able to, again, look at how different prices in different areas of the DRC compared to help serve as an evidence base as the country program was designing some of their agriculture and food security programming. Thank you very much, Sonia and Janine, for sharing your processes when setting up this market monitoring dashboard. Thank you.